is your last chance, John, Governor Wilson said sternly as he stared. Barnum smiled as the heat of the light burned the retinas in his eyes. He didn't answer, but rather let his lack of a voice speak volumes inside of that room of death. The man from behind Barnum brought another thick wire around the chair and repeated the process, but this time attaching it to Varnum's swollen left ankle as water pooled below his feet. The light turned off, and Varnum squinted, adjusting his vision. In front of him was a covered window, and in the moment his eyes normalized, the curtains were swiftly drawn open, and multiple fluorescent lights came to life, buzzing like flies circling the dead. The governor of Colorado stood in front of him, Mr. Wilson, John Barnum said, acknowledging his presence. You know what I want, John, Governor Wilson said with a soft voice. All you have to do is give it to me, and all of this stops. It all can go away, John. John held his tongue and thought about the vacant room he was staring into. It reminded him of the end. The curtains had been drawn open for a reason. That window would have typically acted as the barrier between the inmate and the families of the victims who would witness the execution. But it was empty. White cushioned folding chairs were placed in uniform lines, and every one of them were vacant as water was in the desert. He watched as a flickering white light came to life within the viewing room, reinforcing that it was as empty as his soul. Eight days ago, John Varnum was arrested for the murder of over thirty known victims, most of them females, some children, and more are missing. He had used large rain catchment tanks made of polyethylene and killed most of his victims by drowning them in acid. Their bodies were left to digest inside of the tanks like food digested inside of your stomach. John Varnum kept his victims at his warehouse instead of the tanks, and each tank blind and rose for as far as the eye could see. He kidnapped men, women, and children, but mostly female prostitutes, which he had a particular fetish for, and his wife knew all too well of his sadistic habits before she died during the raid on the warehouse. Governor, I know what you want, but I'm not sure I'll give it to you, John Varnum said, snidely. Is this because I killed that cop? Or maybe because I killed your favorite call girl, hmm? John said, drool leaking between his lips as he spoke. I killed that cop exactly eight days ago. And look at me now. The law works fast around this town. No trial. No jury of my peers. No. Nothing. He lifted his head slightly, motioning toward the empty viewing room. It's empty, just like you, John, the governor replied. It is, but that's of no matter. What matters is how far are you willing to go? I mean, you have me here in this chair without a death warrant, without a judgment, trial, appeal, or anything close to being legal. No lawyer? No, nope. John. It's really very simple. I want my daughter back. If you don't tell me where she is, he paused and motioned his hand to the executioner behind the mirror. The light began to flicker, and a noticeable buzz could be heard in the air. The electricity is primed, and do you know what sort of pain two thousand volts at five amps will feel like, John? If you don't tell me where you took my daughter, if you don't tell me where she is, I'm simply going to walk behind that wall, hit the switch, and you will find out how painful death can be.